in the shared notes. So our very special guest today is Mr. Ivan Ma. He's the my SQL user group lead in Hong Kong and has over 20 years of experience in enterprise system, infrastructure, and software technologies. He's also currently the MySQL Principal Solution Engineer, Asia Pacific with Oracle, responsible for pre-sales consulting, technical and education, and product promotions. He joined Oracle in the system team from Sun Microsystem Acquisition, and prior to that, he was Principal Solution Architect with Sybase APEC covering APEC regions. So now let's welcome Mr. Ivan Ma. Mr. Ivan, over to you. Thanks. Uh, thanks everyone for joining this section. So today uh, we have uh, already covered uh, two sections. One from Hernan to talking about the Greek stuff, uh, MySQL shell. And last session that we got the idea of the MySQL service on cloud. Thanks to Jay. So this section is about handling data consistency. Data is the king. Data is very important. How can actually we do it? Okay, we do it this actually on MySQL. Today we cover this. So you can see, uh, basically, I'm uh, as mentioned, I'm from Oracle. Uh, this is uh, this is a group of leader in Hong Kong for MySQL, and as well, uh, I have been actually doing a lot of work with uh, like Excel Data, Oracle, Sybase over ten years. So in database, I believe I I am good. I'm good at it. So uh, let's look at what my uh, database consistency is. So basically consistent means it follows the rules. So the rules has to be done beforehand. So as a database system, we refer to like database transactions and changes must be, must be actually on the way, okay, it's being defined uh, for what it can be done, right? This does not guarantee correctness of a transaction in all way you want it to be done, okay? So uh, we can see, okay, there are other terms so-called asset or CAP. So asset, atomic, consistency, which is important for today, isolations, durability. So as a transaction is all success or failure, it's logical unit of work. So this actually, we believe everyone's uh, using database, we need transactions. But over time, we also see distributed database system and distributed system in OS as well. So people also consider this as multiple system, yeah, multiple nodes actually running together. We need more than just so-called asset. Uh, there's other terms called CAP. So there's also a theorem called CAP theorem. So we see consistency, availability, uh, partitions tolerance. So consistency, uh, in a sense, multiple. Uh, system actually multiple update concurrently is doing the update or doing things and it has to be in the same orders right so uh, this has to be consistent so availability is in a way that binary outcome with a request yes or no right so it may be actually taking too long to respond meaning it is not available so there is also petition tolerance as a light chain angle so one can only be actually achieving consistent or availability only two or three. So this is so-called CAP theorem. Of course, somebody is trying to challenge this theorem. Uh, anyway, today we talk about consistency. We want this to be done, right? And what exactly in database it is a matter. So for my SQL, uh, we have the transactional storage engine, which is NODB. So 90, 95% or even more people actually is today using NLDB. So it supports transactions. There are others storage engine uh, in my SQL, like memory, CSV, or black hole, or some others, or my ISM in the old days. But what we do, okay, today people use NLDB. Okay, 95 or more, okay, people using it. So, uh, as the transactional uh, storage engine, it supports like how we do begin and commit, as well as like save point and roll back or actually release the save point. So those are important. And from the database management, we need to shut down, bring down the server, 
and from time to time, maybe we need to restart the server. So uh, all this actually is talking about uh, we need to, uh, yeah, to kind of uh, undo and redo, right? So in database, we have uh, undo logs, redo logs. So it is important for like crash and recovery, especially when a system or a power plug. So the system crash and then we restart it and something actually just in progress. So what can this be recovered? We based on those actually in transit data, which either is being done and have not yet finished, we need to undo, we need to clear all this data from the temporary, from the data files. So yeah, we actually, we can do it from undo segment. And as well as something has been committed, but it hasn't actually been put into the data files. So in a sense, we need to apply it based on the redo logs. So when the startup comes up, the server actually read the redo logs and tries to apply all this. So it make the database to be consistent at certain state, and then we can start to use it. So uh, again, when we talk about this like consistency, we also talk about how we back up and restore and recover. So how can we back up the data so that when we recover the data from this backup data, it has to be consistent. It is not just look at the restore time, it's actually how we back up the data. If the backup is inconsistent when we restore, there's no way we can recover. It's actually in an inconsistent state. So backup, recovery, we talk about it. And there are things that today is about HA. So it means there are redundant server and data can be one place as a shared storage. It's likely people talk about active passive and maybe using cluster system or VM, start and stop and actually bring another server and looking at the same shared storage and then start input, yeah, having the same IP. So yeah, it's looking at the same data. It's like, okay, data consistency. And it's based on undo and redo in that case. Uh, what about HA when we do replications? It's actually been not we do log. How does it work? And as well as there are latest things we talk about group replications and in the DB cluster. So this is like multiple servers that can actually handle our requests. It can be a single server for primary and the other server nodes to provide recapabilities. So as long as we create data, we may pass data to other server and people may access the data from other, how can we read the data in a reconsistent? Or we have the right consistency, uh, conflict can actually be detected and handled properly. So this will be actually one of the topics today over this 25 minutes, it is quite short. And there's also some other things with multiple server, which it is uh, MDB cluster. Today, we are not putting this as focus, but anyway, so I just put it here. And as well as there, there, there is actually people create the applications. It can be programmatically to create a whole bunch of the logic. Okay, it's not just transaction, it can be something else. It can actually be across okay different systems so programmatically how can we do it so as the backup how can we create this consistent state so that we restore it is the consistent backup restore so uh basically we can bring down the server and no nobody actually updating the data so the data as a file as a storage it is consistent is it in a consistent state and then we just back up the data. But yeah, it is actually reduced or actually steady, there is downtime. So today we have uh, always available system, yeah, systems running as productions uh, 24 by seven, every minute, every seconds, people's doing update. So as the running server, people may try to say, uh, we take a snapshot. How can we take a snapshot or oh, hold the VM and not doing anything so it is capable to just give the VM function, nothing's to work right, in the VM. So does it actually work? Yes or no? So basically when we keep this VM, it is frozen, the data is not actually applied to storage 
it's like the data, okay, it's like crash. This is a crash recovery models. So it is good? Not really. And as well, if this is, is a like cluster system, you know, DB cluster replications, it has to help it. So when one actually tries to ping the other server, it does not respond. So because frozen, so the node will be kicked out. So this is not a good idea. So we believe a better way of doing this backup is to use some other way of applying to redo logs and backing up and bring the data to be in a consistent state. Okay, so we introduce like enterprise backup from the yeah, Oracle uh, Enterprise Editions, which actually can back up the data, okay, with multi-threaded uh, process, okay. Uh, it actually back up the data much, much faster physically, okay. It is not logical backup, it is physical backup, and also it brings the data in a consistent state by applying the transaction law, so it brings to a state when the data is coming back, right? So restore data can also be faster because it can be parallel. It's not like SQL, it has to apply SQL, SQL one line, line by line. And a lot of more features with enterprise additions, full incremental backup, monitoring, and encryptions, and all like this. And also when the data with the MySQL is encrypted, we need to read the data with more secure way than is actually enterprise additions. Anyway, people also use MySQL dump. So the dump, take an example, why it is inconsistent, how we can actually get it to be consistent. So like uh, in the pictures down here, so uh, a table at one time is table one, 10 records, table two, 100 records. But over maybe another time, it has the table ones getting two more records, a master, okay, custom record. All this, there are 20 more, it's 120. But the backup process actually start in the middle. So the table one actually kept being captured for 10 records. And the table two, it is copied, uh, it was dumped, and the, the backup data has 120. At the end, the backup data has 10 records for table one, 120 for table two. Is that effective? Is that actually consistent? It is inconsistent backup. When we restore, this backup is not quite usable. So how can we do this? So if we use MySQL dump, basically people has to apply single transactions or people tries to use log table. Single transactions, uh, it may work for InnoDB, okay? So if there are other kind of uh, storage engines, okay, you may consider to use others, okay, log table. Particularly when you're using MySQL 5.7, there are some other tables, which is a system table. The data dictionary, they are not in a DB. So the way you back up the full database, it has to be more than just single transactions. So what is single transaction and log table? Single transactions means, uh, my SQL has an isolation level, which is repeatable read. When I start the transactions, it actually captures the versions. So all this data actually at that snapshot time. And by then, all this in the DB tables, when we read it's actually based on the time which we started. So that actually can be actually quite helpful for a sections. But in, remember, this actually for a sections to go for sections to go. If actually you break in the middle, you want to do it actually table by table by table, it doesn't work because single transaction only within a single sections. And as well as how we do this, like, okay, lock table, we can lock all the table up front and then nobody can touch. So this may be actually work for the system having more than just in ODB. And there's also another options with, uh, yes, too many rows, a big table. And the quick options, which is very useful, it actually dumps the data row by row. Consider a 10 million records when we retrieve it, it may be overflow your memory. So the way we may actually dump the rows to a table, but it, it may take quite long. So there is also the MySQL shell domino. So um, Hernando in the earlier sections mentioned this and just uh, refresh in here. So MySQL Share is quite good, okay, so to do this to 
uh, export data to actually kind of logically back up the data and to bring the data back. So basically, there are dump instance, dump schemers, means dump many, many databases within this instance, and also to restore it, okay, by having the load dump, dump tables, or, or actually export the table in CSV format, in certain format, and terminate it by, by some fields, right? And import the data tables, which in, in a way people use load data for these utilities, which you till dump uh, from MySQL shell. It's also considered consistency. How can this be? Firstly, this is multi-threaded backup, multi-threaded dumb and low. So the way how it does, look at this. At the very beginning when it starts, the MySQL shell, we try to lock, okay, to issue a lock, a so-called flush table with lock, and start all the sections, start all the threads. So all the threat when it is started, it will try to set the section transaction isolation level and it is repeat read and then start the transactions with consistent snapshot. Meaning at the very beginning, all data is in the consistent the same way as this time zero. It is consistent. Okay, and it is repeatable read isolation level no matter you actually set it to committed, uh, recommitted. So this is quite good and thread, multi-threaded uh, dumb consistency in here. When we load data back, it is big data. So how can it be actually just one way to load? Maybe in the middle, the connections fail, something wrong. So it's a long process. So what we can do, actually, it can be partial. We actually, how can we bring this consistency? Uh, we start a restore, uh, and then in the middle it crash or it's restart, uh, and then we can continue. We have we can actually use this MySQL uh, uh, MySQL shell to load the data as partial and resume. This is quite a very good tool. And there is also in MySQL 8.0, uh, we have new features: the clone. So clone is also kind of backup, okay, to reproduce another image, which is the running server. We want to reproduce another running server. How can we do this? As like there is a sender and receiver. We call this recipient and donor. So as here, the donor, we have to install plugin. So install the clone plugin and create a specific users, which actually the remote server, uh, it will connect back to here. And we actually grant the specific right, the privilege to these users. Okay, by then in the recipient, uh, in, the, in the recipient side, we as well uh, install the plugin, and we try to set the where we can actually get data from the donor list, and create the users and grant and clone, so we can clone instance from the specific uh, servers from the donor. So having said that, so what is actually the progress? The progress we can actually see from here. So as like, this is like backup, backup, okay, from the donor side, and then sending the data over the networks to the recipient and apply the log. We do log, so it is consistent. It is consistent like backup and restore, like, okay. This is a very good tool and good features in MySQL 8. And MySQL shell in InnoDB cluster, we support natively using this clone, natively using this clone to reproduce a server. Here, you can see we do log copy. So we actually we have to we do log, okay, copy across and apply when it is restarted. So do we do log, we, we apply and bring the database to be a consistent state. There is also programmatic SQL, which consider like GTID consistency, it, is con it has to be consistent. How can this actually be done? Uh, before ISO 8.021, people has been asking for like create a table from select statement. You can see create table from a select statement, it is DDL and DML. So DDL, it is like, okay, uh, on its own uh, create table, it's either yes or no. 
Uh, select statement can actually be a transaction, but create table, there is not, there's no transaction uh, uh, concept. So in here, uh, after the 21, we support this as like rollback, okay? It has the GTID consistency. And there's also, if we consider multiple nodes and someone actually execute DDL on one node and execute DML, so it might not be very consistent. So we have to bring this like consistency how we combine DDL and DML running on the same server. And there's also, when we programmatically to consider things, uh, there's also data dictionary, system data, which can be uh, my ISM, like my SQL 5.7. And my SQL 8.0, the data they use uh, in ODB. So there are other things programmatic SQL for consistency control. When we want to provide consistency, we have to provide kind of locking mechanisms to have the serialized manner accessing the critical region of data. So we can uh, use lock instance for backup when all this is actually, uh, you cannot create table, you cannot actually manage the DDL. But DML update inserts, yeah, it's okay. And there's also, as mentioned earlier, flush table with read logs or flush tables, specify a few tables and then, yeah, give a read logs. And log tables, specific tables, a full table logs, and programmatics to have the mutex get logs and release logs. And there's others row locking. Okay, basically locking can actually be, be actually in the row locking uh, mechanism. So meta logs. So all along, you can see, so I try to flip over. So replications, so replications more than just data. There is also repository. So when server crash, there are some point GTID, something actually put into the so-called file. In the old day, 5.7 is actually the repository is file. 8.0 is on the table, and the table is in ODB. When server crash, it will not be just partial file and parcel in DB, it will all be in the database, so it is crash safe. So the database is consistent. It's not just on one server, but actually across this HA capability, okay, farm. And master info repository defines table, relay logs info repository defines table as default. And there are other things because consistency means uh, redundancy, multiple things happens, multi threaded here. So, uh, when the replication store and the slave, we call the replicas, has to apply data along all this. So we can actually execute the parallelism, the logical cloud, and making how many actually workers to run, and the commit orders, and how we actually we can use the tracking, means which two, which three, which section can actually be in parallel. It can be right set as like hash number or whatever. So it can be based on the commit orders. So there are a lot of things in 8.0 we can do better and faster. So uh, last, it is about InnoDB cluster. InnoDB cluster is more than just one server. It's multiple server. We need write and read consistency. How can this be done? So consistency level can be eventual, can be before, can be after, before and after, or at last before on primary flow if it over. What that is, eventual, meaning all this data eventually will be actually consistent. No matter what you write in A server, B server, C server, eventually all server consistent. Before, after, and this looks at us. So what this actually eventuals? Eventuals means when we execute a transactions and writing data, the data is executed and all this data can be at the same time and this actually eventually will be commit on server. So they send to all this, okay? So you, we may get the data at one point, at one point, uh, M1s get the latest data, but M2 may not get it because they do the work on its own. So there's that, that can actually introduce delay. So what is the before consistency? When we execute and commit, okay? So the before cons consistency is to, Actually, when we execute, we ensure all the data at that point from the relay log in the other servers to commit first. So to commit first, 
and then to execute the next one. So this actually, when we do this, this can be the next statement. And before, all the data, if there's outstanding data, backlog, it will apply first, and when we read it, the data is there. So before consistency, we can actually have the data, consistent data, read consistency to all notes. After means when we write the data, when we write, update the data, create the data, we commit and actually we wait until all the server commit and apply the logs to the server. So this all commit, it is like full synchronizations. So this is all this. And before and after combine the before behavior and after behavior. And this last one, it is like before on primary fail. What happened when we fail over and switching? When one server is down, we have the InnoDB cluster, the route is attaching to a server. When this primary server we update, there is backlog actually on the node two and node three. We switch over, new servers coming up. So the backlog on the node two, when it is elected as new primary, the data will be applied first before we get the connection. So the data will be consistent. We guarantee consistency when failover connections occur. So, in a summary, MySQL 8.0 gives you the latest, greatest features, MySQL Shell, Chrome, InnoDB Custom, and many things. And consistency can actually happen programmatically, backup restore, replications, InnoDB Custom, yeah, maintenance all this way. Yeah, that's all for today. Uh, time's up, I know. Uh, any questions?